Uh, hi. Um, I don't even know if I should be recording this video right now. And I really don't even know what I'm going to say. Um, but let's, let's see what happens. Okay, so an article came out this morning. It's all over the interwebs right now talking about Pope Francis calling for civil union law for same-sex couples, couples in a shift from the Vatican stance. I want to go through this article a little bit with you here so that we can see what's going on. But before we do that, I want to share, because apparently it needs to be shared, what the Catholic Church teaches about homosexuality, homosexual acts, okay? I have a lot of viewers people who are atheists and Protestants. I know I have some Muslim viewers. I have LDS viewers. So it's helpful to clarify what the Catholic Church teaches and cannot cease teaching. Homosexuality refers to relations between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction towards persons of the same sex. It's taken a great variety of forms through the centuries and in different cultures. Its psychological genesis remains largely unexplained. Basing itself on sacred scripture, which presents homosexual acts as acts of grave depravity, tradition has always declared that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. They are contrary to the natural law. They close the sexual act to the gift of life. They do not proceed from a genuine, effective, affective, and sexual complementarity. Under no circumstances can they be approved. Catholic Church has always taught this. The Catholic Church continues to teach this. The Catholic Church will always teach this. Now, sometimes people will say, why is the Catholic Church so hung up on gay marriage and on homosexuality? That's not the case. The reason the church is responding to, to these issues of homosexuality is precisely the other way around. It's because society is so hung up on these issues, right? Just like you haven't seen a lot of Catholics speaking openly about transgenderism until the last eight years, is because it's really kind of come to the fore and that's why we're addressing it. But I want to make it clear that the Catholic Church is against all sorts of perverted sexual acts. The Catholic Church is against masturbation, sees it as unnatural. It is against uh, polygamy. It is against adulterous sexual acts. It's against pornographic sexual acts. So to paint the Catholic Church's teaching about just as being hung up on, on homosexuals is, is, is not at all the case. This is not about picking on anybody. As I've heard Father Mike Schmidt say before, all of us are in this together. Like all of us struggle with distortions in our sexuality. And so to pretend that on one side we have the homosexuals and then over here we have the heterosexuals is a wrong way of thinking about it. We're, we're really all in this together. But that doesn't mean we, ha we, we can be unclear on what constitutes a grave sin in the sexual realm. But listen to what the Catechism says here before we look at what Pope Francis allegedly has said. The number of men and women who have deep-seated homosexual tendencies is not negligible. This inclination, which is objectively disordered. Now, what does that mean, objectively disordered? Because sometimes disorder can sound like a slur. It can sound like a pejorative thing. When we talk about order within the sexual act, we're saying, okay, there is a biology, there's just looking at the biology, there is a teleology to the sexual act. Just like there is a teleology to eating, namely nutrition, right? That is why humans eat. They may say they're eating for pleasure, and that may be the motivating factor. It may be the consequence. But biologically speaking, we eat toward why? For nutrition. If you cease to enjoy food, you would still eat if you wanted to stay alive, right? If you were to eat and then force yourself to throw up, this would be a disordered act because it would be going against the order of eating. So when we say that homosexual acts or masturbatory acts are objectively disorder, we're saying objectively speaking, it is contrary to the end of the sexual act, which is an openness to life and the good of the spouses. Um, listen to what the Catechism says here, especially if you're somebody who thinks that the church looks down upon homosexuals. They... That is to say, those with same-sex attraction. I don't even like using the term homosexuals because, again, this sets up this sort of them and us thing. That's not what it is. 
I mean, I'm, I've been married for 14 years. Sometimes I find myself sexually attracted to other women. It's not like every other woman in the world ceases to become sexually attractive once I got married. Same thing is true with you. That doesn't, if I were to act on those inclinations, that would be a sin, but I wouldn't be there for a, an adulterer sexual, right? I would be a man who committed adultery. And so that's why the church uses the language usually of same sex attraction. Like you are just like me and you have same sex attraction. I have opposite sex attraction, all right? But listen to this. They, that is those with same sex attraction, must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Every sign of unjust discrimination in their regard should be avoided. Like I'm, ha I'm happy to pub like publicly repent here right now of the ways that I spoke disparagingly of people with same sex attraction when I was in my teenage years, especially. Like, God forgive me for the way that I made fun of people who had same-sex attraction. You know, I, I'm okay doing that. Of course, I should do that. It's a sin to make fun of other people, to mock them, to look down upon them, to discriminate against them. But we're not discriminating when we say that marriage cannot contain two men, right? That marriage has a nature, and it's, it's a nature that precedes government. And that government, therefore, cannot change the definition of marriage. Right? Just like the government doesn't have the right to change the definition of friendship. Right? Friendship now means enemies. Well, okay, I mean, you can play with words if you want, but friendship predates government. You don't have a right to redefine it. Okay, let's have a look what Pope Francis has allegedly said here. This comes from the Catholic News Agency, okay, which is by no means a sort of trad outlet. In a documentary that premiered Wednesday in Rome, Pope Francis called for the passage of civil union laws for same-sex couples departing from the position of the Vatican's doctrinal office and the Pope's predecessors on the issue. The remarks came amid a portion of the documentary that reflected on pastoral care for those who identify as LGBT. And of course, we should care for everybody. Again, I just said that right from, from the catechism. Here's what Pope Francis said. Homosexuals have a right to be part of the family. They're children of God and have a right to a family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of it. A hundred percent, right? I don't know anybody who would say the opposite. Like, no, actually, if you are a homosexual, you should be kicked out of my family and you should be made to feel miserable. Maybe there are people like that, but that is not what the church teaches. The church teaches that we ought to love everybody and want their happiness and want their good. Continue. Uh, what we have to create is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered, the Pope said. I stood up for that. All right. Part of the point of this video is to call upon people much smarter than myself, which isn't that difficult, to begin addressing this issue. You want to know why quote unquote trads are angry? This is why. It's, it's like we're gaslighting them, right? It's like we're saying, what's the big deal? Like, why do you hate Pope Francis? And they're like, we don't frigging hate Pope Francis. We think he says things that are massively unhelpful and then doesn't clarify them. When you live in a day and age of intense confusion among the most basic concepts like male and female, Right? Can a female magically become a male by willing it and vice versa? If Trump decided he was female, would he be the first female vice president? Or, sorry, president. When we don't understand what marriage apparently means, we are living in a sea of confusion. And Catholics like myself, who know we have the fullness of the truth that God wants for his people, would like the church establishment to clarify that which is unclear. And so when we get ambiguous claims at best, which then are never clarified, it's frustrating, especially as we seek to make Christ's last commandment our first priority, namely make disciples of all the nations. And they're like, okay, I'm open to Catholicism. And then they read things like this a lot and, and they want clarity and they don't get it. Maybe, right, maybe a libertarian case can be made for civil unions among homosexuals. But when you say stuff like this, you, the way the world hears you is, 
homosexual acts are not disordered. And the Catholic Church has changed its opinion on this. In other words, if you champion you know, same-sex unions and essentially raise them to marriage and you make it a distinction without a difference, it seems like you're implicitly validating those relationships. I want to skip down here. All right. In 2003, under the leadership of Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger and at the direction of Pope John Paul II, the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith taught that respect for homosexual persons, which we should do and have always taught, even if people have failed to do that, like myself, right? Respect for homosexual persons cannot lead in any way to approval of homosexual behavior or to legal recognition of homosexual unions. The common good requires that laws recognize, promote, and protect marriage as the basis of the family, the primary unit of society. Legal recognition of homosexual unions or placing them on the same level as marriage would mean not only the approval of deviant behavior with the consequence of making it a model in present-day society, but would also obscure basic values which belong to the common inheritance of humanity. The church cannot fail to defend these values. For the good of men and women and for the good of society itself, the CDF added, calling support for such unions, uh, sorry, such unions from politicians gravely immoral. Not even in a remote analogous sense, Do homosexual unions fulfill the purpose for which marriage and family deserve specific categorical recognition? On the contrary, there are good reasons for holding that such unions are harmful to the proper development of human society, especially if their impact on society were to increase, the document said. I'm going to put a link in the description below for you to read the the rest of this. I think the, 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 the main point that I'm making is... It's like we have two sides in the church right now, huh? On one side, we have traditionalist Catholics, of which I would consider myself a part, but traditionalist Catholics who seem to be calling into question like legitimate councils, right? Like the Second Vatican Council. And we're like, you had me until you started doing that stuff. And then on the other hand, and, and, and in that same camp, people who are denying the legitimacy of the papacy of Pope Francis, right? And then on the other hand, it's like we have people that we would love to get behind. Bishops, like popular Catholic apologetics and um, evangelization outfits who seem to be totally silent on this issue. So there's this vacuum. And so the only airtime we get is from people who, just to repeat myself, seem to be denying the Second Vatican Council, right, or, um, or the papacy of Pope Francis. So I would just like to invite you, if you are one of these people, like a bishop, I would love to hear a bishop, please help me do this. Because it, can't it be true to say, I can respect the Holy Father, I can pray for him, and he's a media, mediocre pope at best. It seems to me that if we continually defend everything that comes out of Pope Francis's mouth, we're gaslighting traditionalist Catholics, right? And they're like, this is not okay. Look at what everyone is thinking. We're like, what is wrong with you? Why are you such a spaz? Like, I've done a lot of work in the area of pornography addiction, and gaslighting is a term that's used by therapists when men who are addicted to porn gaslight their wives, right? Because their wives are, like, seriously crushed by their husband's porn use. And maybe they become hysterical. And then the husband says, look at you. Look at how you're acting. Like, this is, is what gaslighting is. And it seems like this is what we're doing to the traditionalists in the church. And I think we should bloody well stop it. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the clickbait title. I don't want Pints with Aquinas to be about like pointing to the church's garbage. I, I think Pints with Aquinas exists to help people explain and defend the Catholic faith from a Thomistic perspective. And I think we're doing an okay job with that. We get emails every week from people who are talking about converting. But if we do not address this issue... These issues, in a balanced sort of way, 
then the people who were converting into the Catholic Church because of Pints with Aquinas and other fantastic groups, they're going to be led out of the church because instead they're listening to other people who are saying, look at what the Pope just said, and we've got no one kind of helping us to understand this. Like even just the distinction between like, yeah, okay, Pope Francis can have a, an opinion, I can disagree with it, and that isn't church teaching. Like, who's, who's explaining this? Can they please explain it? <sighs> now, this is a book that I would highly recommend you read, especially if you're worried about the papacy. This, this was an excellent book. I just had Joe Heschmeyer on the podcast. It's called Pope Peter Defending the Church's Most Distinctive Doctrine in a Time of Crisis. And I was so proud, I have to say, of Catholic Answers for acknowledging this crisis within the church and it, it, like allowing this book to be published. I mean, li listen to this line. It's, it's really good. He says, so, it, so, let's see, sorry. The church right now is going through a period of crisis, at least in part because, italics, because of bad papal and episcopal leadership. Yes, yes, this is part of the crisis. The household of God, which is the church of the living God, is going through the roughest patch it's seen in centuries. And all I'm asking is that we could stop pretending that we're not going through a rough crisis. Could we please stop doing that? I understand the desire to defend the papacy. I even understand, I totally understand the desire to point out when Pope Francis says things that are terribly helpful. But can we please stop pretending that these things that like this are helpful, they're not helpful. Like, is the Vatican going to come out and, and clarify this? Personally, what I would love to see is to have every bishop and every pope come out publicly and say, yes, of course, homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. And yes, of course, at the same time, we ought to love them. We, we ought to include them, right? Because again, it's not a them and us. It's just all of us with our, with our brokenness. I love this line, pretending otherwise, and forgive me if I've done this, I think like every time something like this comes out, I struggle. Am I being a coward or am I being prudent? Like if I don't address the latest thing that's come out of the Vatican, am I being a coward? Because I've already had dioceses like reject me and have said they don't want me in their diocese just because of stuff like this. I'm not lying. I've been denied from speaking at prominent Catholic events from tweets. Does anyone really think that like Matt Frad is like a super angry trad? I don't mean to sound like Joe Biden who's like, do I seem like a radical? And we're like, I don't know. But like, if I, if I'm being like denied speaking in dioceses, it's because of like vanilla posts like this. I think we have a problem. Let me just read this because I keep getting excited and failing to finish. Pretending otherwise is dishonest. Right, pretending that there is not a crisis because of bad papal and episcopal leadership, right? Pretending it's dishonest and it sets non Catholics up for disappointment. Not every pope or bishop lives up to his calling, just as not every parent does. But the truth is, as with the sacrament of matrimony, the papal structure of the church is founded by Jesus Christ. It exists for the good of his people and it is better than any other alternative. Excellent book. I really, I read this in one weekend. He's not asking me to promote this, but I would say get this or just go listen to the podcast that I just did on the papacy because it seems like we've got two sides in the church that are gaslighting each other, right? In a way, because <laughs> it's like you've got like the, what do you want to call them? Moderate mainstream people who are trying to defend everything that comes out of Pope Francis's mouth and that gaslights the trads. And then the, the trads are like doubling down maybe denying the Second Vatican Council. And this leads the moderate mainstream people to say there's absolutely no problem. And if they're not actually saying that, their lack of criticism or apparent realism seems to be saying it. So I don't know if this is a good idea to get on the blower and do this. A blower is a phone in Australia, in case you're wondering. But let me just oh, come, Lord Jesus, and bless your church. Help us to be faithful to you. Look, forgive, forgive me, but this weekend we are holding a virtual Catholic apologetics conference. And I think now more than ever, we need to know what the Catholic Church teaches, despite what a particular person might say, right, within the hierarchy. It's this weekend. It's 100% free. It's from October 23rd through 25th. We have over 50 amazing 
Catholic speakers as well as non-Catholic speakers like Dr. William Lane Craig, who is going to talk about Fidus et Ratio by Pope John Paul II and how philosophy can help us in the new evangelization. It's incredible. We've got Dr. Scott Hahn, Father Gregory Pine, um, Dr. Ed Fazer, Jimmy Aiken, Steve Ray. We've got a lot of great presenters that are going to help you understand. And we're addressing every sort of issue, right? Like we're addressing what the church actually teaches, despite what headlines might convince us of otherwise, about things like homosexual acts, about contraception, about transgenderism. We're also addressing, you know, standard things like God's existence and why Christ is who he claimed to be. I'll put a link in the description, but please click this and register today. It's 100% free and you can watch it from wherever you are. <clears throat> I also should probably point out, right, like I, I saw that article and I saw a bunch of articles. I think CNA is like a, a reliable source, which is why I'm quoting from it. I don't mean to speak about things I don't know enough about. And I think this is often why I don't speak about them. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Like, all I know is some secondhand information that some site said. So for the 15th bloody time, can mainstream Catholics cease being quiet about this? And here I mean bishops with platforms and priests with platforms. And can they begin in charity to address these issues so the faithful can be consoled, can be reassured, and so that souls don't get lost as they leave the church, that maybe they just entered because of the confusion that's everywhere that we are not addressing. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. It's like CNN anchors when there's a burning building and they're like, it's just peaceful protests. It's kind of like that. God bless you.